So just a few more words, just a few words today about uh, about the nature of the Alenkes and uh, how we should understand um, the Utifro. Um, when you read when you read the dialogue, please remember to consider to consider what Plato is writing in the context of his rejection of idolatry, in the context of his rejection of beliefs that have nothing to do with knowledge. Um, Plato is one of the first philosophers who discuss a uh, analysis for knowledge that is called justified true belief. In this analysis for knowledge, there is a huge distinction between true belief and knowledge. That means that whenever I have a belief that is true, it does not immediately mean, it does not even mean, forgive me, that that belief is also knowledge. For example, I believe that the, the earth revolves around the sun, but I do not have knowledge about the earth revolving, the sun, uh, uh, revolving around the sun. Why do I know? Why do I believe that the earth revolves around the sun? Because people have told me so. I have not done any kind of research, I have not done the work to find out whether indeed the earth revolves around the sun, but rather I take a belief that I take a view given to me by other people. The majority of our beliefs are in this way. Uh, I can give you one more example to distinguish between true belief and knowledge. Let's say, for example, that I believe that I have five dollars in my pocket, and I indeed have five dollars in my pocket. But I believe I have five dollars in my pocket because I put five dollars yesterday. Suppose that my son needed to go buy something and he came and he took my $5 bill and then he bought whatever he needed to buy, but then he replaced the $5 bill with another $5 bill. The fact that I still have $5 bills in my pocket do not match the explanation I gave at the beginning for why I have $5, $5 in my pocket. At the beginning I said, I have those $5 because I put them there, but they are indeed there because my son replace what I previously had. So the true belief matched, uh, forgive me, my belief matched reality, so in that sense it was a true belief, but my belief was not justified because my belief did not match the explanation for why I have those money in my pocket. The uh, justified true belief analysis for knowledge requires to have all those three elements, belief, truth, and justification. In the absence of justification, my beliefs are not, uh, cannot count for knowledge. Why, why is this important? You may remember that we discussed in class how for Socrates and for Plato especially, our minds seem to be like a, a room in which we put various pieces of furniture during the time, and those pieces of furniture do not necessarily match from the beginning. However, each one of them are pieces of furniture, so they are indeed real things. More than that, some of that, some of those ideas that we have, the pieces of furniture, may match reality. But the problem is the inconsistency between them because they were because they appeared in our minds at different times. And forgive me, based on different understandings of, of the world. For uh, Plato, this is the foundation that will allow us to understand further other ideas, or to accept other ideas. And the foundation is always very important. The foundation is, the foundation establishes the way in which we can understand the world. It is like when you build a house. When you build a house, uh, you have to have a strong foundation, because otherwise everything falls apart. So if I have a good justification in my beliefs, then my knowledge about the about the world about my reality is going to be built like a strong house. It cannot be just cannot just fall apart whenever uh, a wind blows it. Okay, so remember for the justified to believe there are three conditions: a subject, the knower, a human being, has a belief, believes the proposition P, so has a statement. The proposition P is true, so it matches reality. And the third most important condition is that the subject is justified in believing P. So I, the subject has a, uh, an explanation for why P is the case, and the explanation matches, matches reality. How is this important in, uh, in the uh, uh, Utifro? That, uh, if you remember, Utifro proposes a definition of piety. So he claims he knows. We have seen so far that whoever claims that uh, he or she knows something gets into trouble in Plato's dialogue, and in Greeks thought in general. 
And what does Socrates do? Socrates tries to see whether this foundation, this knowledge on which Eutypho bases his actions, is very important in this part. So Eutypho doesn't just believe something and uh, goes peacefully to sleep and uh, doesn't think much about that anymore, but rather Eutypho bases his action on that, goes to court to accuse his father. A very, very uh, important thing, you know, a very important thing and quite radical for the Greeks to accuse your own father of, of, uh, of murder. Um, so, coming back to that, Eutypho having this knowledge, Socrates tries to understand whether Eutypho bases his knowledge or bases his belief on reality. So what does he do? He goes with uh, Eutypho in a process of questioning and answering that is called the Alenchus, because he refutes the idea that Eutypho proposed at the beginning. Eutypho uh, gives a definition of what piety is by saying that the pious is that which the gods love. And Socrates wants to see whether this belief is in agreement with the other beliefs he has. So he will ask him, do you also believe in the gods? And he does believe in the gods. He also believes that there are many gods and that various gods love different things. All those beliefs that we have together, there are several gods, gods love different things, and the pious is that which is loved by the gods, are in contradiction. Because all of a sudden, we can see that some gods love things that are pious, and some gods do not love things that are pious, which is in contradiction with the first definition. What, what does that mean for Socrates? That Eutypho bases his knowledge on false understandings about reality. So he doesn't have justification, so, which means he doesn't have knowledge, he only has opinions. Uh, all this process of the Alenchus never gets to truth, but it shows whether someone is justified or not in holding a belief. And um, it usually goes this way. Someone claims something, Socrates says that from that something else resolves, or that there are other beliefs at the same time in one soul, and at the end you get to a contradiction, and because of the contradiction, the whole, all the beliefs have to be rejected, which means the cleansing of the soul. That happens in the Eutypho several times. It will also take place in the Meno, the dialogue which we read next week. And um, please remember to have this in mind whenever you read the dialogue. You also will have the notes of the guy. If you have any questions, please email me, and I will see you next week. Still by email, still online.